Hey, hey, you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Chelsea, and I like to talk about being a working mom, my IVF and fertility journey. We have one little girl that we conceived through IVF, and we are currently on the path towards baby number two. So in today's video, I wanna share with you guys how we paid for our first IVF cycle and what we're doing now, and just sort of my two cents of um, where we were at back then when we first did IVF and where we're at now financially, and just how we look at money, finances, starting a family differently than we did when we first got into this. So lately I have been doing these videos with laundry so I can fold laundry while I chat, but guys, I don't have any laundry to fold right now, which is awesome. So I just have my Creo brew here and we'll just chat. So I first want to disclaim here that I am not a financial expert. I am not an expert on IVF. I'm in no way an expert on anything, really. This is just my experience. And so you can take my experience with a grain of salt. If it is helpful to hear my story and apply some of this to your own situation, then great. That's what I hope for. But um, like I said, this is just my experience. So be sure to talk with your own doctor and talk with your partner and don't rely just on what I say. <laughs> I really hope you keep that in mind throughout all my videos because the point of this is not to put myself as an expert, but just to share my experience. So we got that out of the way, let's get into the discussion. Okay, so many of you might already be familiar with my story. We did IVF three years ago. Our first round of IVF was in February of 2018. So at this time we were quoted about 16,000 for our IVF cycle and transfer. And then I think also um, another 2,000 for PGS testing. So I think we were initially quoted about 18,000 to 20,000. And that is all discussed in this video. I will put up here, I will link it down below. It's one of our first videos we made. We talked about the breakdown of costs before we even went into our IVF cycle. So we had 12,000 to put down up front. And we just kind of thought we would, I guess, just take it as it came to us as far as like the payment. So we were able to put down the 12,000 to do our egg retrieval and pay for the medications for that. Um, but then in our situation, we ended up having to move. So we, did our IVF cycle and all during the IVF cycle, I remember we were trying to figure out, are we going to rent? Are we going to buy? And a situation popped up in our neighborhood that we were really excited about um, as a way to be able to purchase a home. So we were looking at home, this home to purchase the home that I'm in right now, <laughs> the day after the day before our, um, I think it was the day before the weekend before our egg retrieval. So we had just basically spent all of the money to do the egg retrieval. And then we were gonna have to put down a down payment for the, the house. And anyway, if I could go back now, I guess I, I don't know if I would have done it all that way, but I don't know. We'll get more into that as we go through my story. So after doing the egg retrieval, paying for all of that and PGS testing, we ended up purchasing the house that we're in just felt right at the time and we figured it out financially we were able to do it but that did set us back financially as to being able to do our um, frozen embryo transfer so um, it took us a couple months to get settled in the house and to be honest this just wasn't a great financial time for us anyway I, I just look back and I'm like why did we do IVF then we just felt so rushed to do it that we would have just we didn't care, I guess. We were um, so ready after four or five years of trying to get pregnant and seeing everyone around us get pregnant and us feeling so behind that we were just like, whatever, let's just do it. Let's go for it. We have some money to do it. Let's do it now. But then everything piled on top of that, like buying the house and everything. And Eric was actually transitioning jobs at the same time, my husband. So it was crazy, you guys, and um, I don't know if I would go about it that way. I don't. I know I wouldn't. We would have approached that differently because 
of what we know now. And I'll explain a little bit about that. So we waited a couple months, tried to figure out what we were gonna do as far as the embryo transfer went. Finally, we just got impatient again and decided to go for it because we didn't wanna spend too much time waiting just to do the transfer. So about four months later, we decided to do the transfer, but there are unexpected costs that can pop up and we had one that popped up. It was a hysteroscopy because I had polyps in my uterus. So they wouldn't do the transfer until they did that surgery. And again, I have another video of where I break down all about each individual cost of our IVF process and what those exact numbers are. But the surgery was at least, I know it was over a thousand dollars. It could have been close to $2,000. Um, but so that set us back, um, not just financially and with time, but ended up that by the time we transferred, we basically put the transfer on a credit card. And would I do that again? Absolutely not. Um, unless I had the cash to pay that right off right away, um, we would not do that. And I want to talk a little bit about why we would not do that. So it took us a year to pay that off, I believe. It took us about a year. And once you put a chunk of change, at least for us, on a credit card like that, it becomes easier to let that debt pile up. So we ended up paying interest on that credit card and we just got ourselves into a not so great situation. And every time we're paying off those expenses, um, then it's sort of like a reminder of that stress. And had we not been successful that first time to getting pregnant, then I think that would have been even more heartbreaking to have to make those payments every month or you know tr try to work to pay off that card when we felt like we didn't really get anything from it. So you may know that my husband and I are big Dave Ramsey followers. At the beginning of 2020, we really came together on our finances and we took a lot of advice from Dave Ramsey and followed his baby steps. And we have implemented his principles into our life. And we've seen a huge change, not only in our finances, but our relationship. And I've done a little research on what Dave Ramsey recommends as far as IVF goes and adoption and the costs with that. And I appreciate that he acknowledges how important it is to have a family for those who want it. And because it's so important, it's just as important to save up and hustle and grind until you can pay for these treatments or adoption or whatever in cash. Because then that takes a huge chunk of stress away from the already stressful situation of IVF or adoption. You don't want to carry that financial burden along with it. And I know from experience. One thing I heard Dave Ramsey say in regards to IVF was the chance of the procedures being successful is, you know, around 50% maybe maybe higher, maybe lower, but there is a 100% chance that you're going to have to pay back that money if you finance it, if you put it on a credit card or you take out a loan for it. So why put that stress on you, especially if your first time or two through IVF is not successful, which it makes me so sad to think that that's even a thing, that people go through IVF and they're not successful the first time or the second time or the third time or the fourth time. There's so many people that have done multiple rounds of IVF and it doesn't work out. So if you can avoid that financial stress that comes with having debt looming over you, I highly, highly recommend that. And so that is what we are doing this second round. As I mentioned last year, we got really into Dave Ramsey's program and into working through the baby steps and we were able to make it all the way through baby step, what are we on, six now? So at this point, you know, we're working towards paying off our house and upgrading our car and, you know, saving for um, vacations or big life events. And we want to do all these things with cash. So that includes this upcoming round of IVF. So we are very lucky we have two embryos frozen waiting for us to transfer. So we just have to pay that transfer fee, which for us is around four to $5,000 per embryo. So we'll try the first embryo. Hopefully that works. If not, then we'll have that next embryo to try, but we do not want to do the transfer until we have that money saved. 
and set aside for it. Because like I said, we want to avoid any stress that can come with having unnecessary debt, where instead we can just save up, pay for the procedure in cash, pray and hope that it works out. And then if it doesn't, we'll go ahead, save up cash again for that next procedure and just continue to work from there and hope that that second round works. And if it doesn't, then we can regroup then. But we are very hopeful with the two embryos that we have and we are doing our best to save. And we've been working really hard um, on some side hustles to be able to bring in that extra income. And if you guys have any questions about, you know, what we've done to bring in extra income or, you know, if you want me to do a video on that, I guess I could, but there are so many videos here on YouTube that you can look to see, you know, how can you make money on the side? Don't join an MLM. There are definitely some ways that are scammy and sketchy. So keep an eye out for those. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. We can chat more about this. Also join my Facebook group. We can chat more in there about how to make some extra side money so that you can pay for your fertility treatments in cash or adoption or whatever your journey is. Follow me on Instagram if you're not already. Subscribe and hit the thumbs up button for me and I will catch you in my next video. Bye guys. Thank you.